Young lady, I do not know where to begin. Welcome back to another armor review. This one is sponsored by Millennial Mage, which is a book, by the way, and we'll come back to it periodically. We have five and a half tiers from I'd Wear It, the best, down through Pretty Good, not perfect, but you know, reasonable, via Eh when it fails to rise above mediocrity, to could be worse if an attempt was made, but really not much of one, all the way down to just stab me now for the worst defenders. And of course, there's also not actually armor for things that I have been asked to review, which aren't actually armor, but I'll give you my opinion on them anyway. I don't think we have any of those this week, but we'll see. I'm wearing my appropriate hoodie, let's go. Mordred from Fate Apocrypha. This one came with the note, and just to be clear, the actual armor, not the outfit that's basically sleeves, leggings, a loincloth, and a strap around the breasts. I feel pretty safe in assuming what category that would fall into. Um, yes. I know you didn't ask for this one, but it is hilarious and brilliant. I'm not sure if it's meant to be armor or if they're just channeling Princess Jasmine when she's Jafar's captive, but either way, it's very much a statement. Let's have a look at the actual request. Oh, okay. I want to give it an I'd wear it and it looks really cool, but it is very spiky. And those heels would be okay for horse riding, I guess. Would you not just be stabbing your horse all the time with those spikes and... Wait, is she a baddie? I mean, she is called Mordred. Mordred was various kinds of traitor in Arthurian legend. If she's a baddie, I'd wear it. Because yes, spikes are very impractical, but look how intimidating. And yes, kind of over the top, but that's okay. Heels of a more or less appropriate height for riding a horse? Full face helmet to go with your full plate armor? At least nine out of 10. I'd wear it, good job. Starting strong. We continue with a quote from today's sponsor. She's going to kill me, you heard her. <sighs> she won't leave you dead. Next, Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Specifically the female version, but we can look at both. Young lady, I do not know where to begin. You young man are similarly inexplicable, but at least you got clothes. First, those heels, that's probably a seven centimeter heel at minimum. That's not going to be great for the sword fighting and the running around. One Pauline to protect the left knee. Why only the left? The lace leggings are a bold choice that we'll come back to, but they make me assume that she's into fashion. And she also has this weird detached collar thing, which is completely useless, so fashion accessory. And then hot pants? And no, that's I spent a very long time looking at this and concluded that it is in fact a high-low skirt. Hey, this is 2010 calling and I was going to ask for our high-low skirts back, but you know what, we're good. Definitely giving fashionista vibes, and if the character is not meant to be into fashion, then why, why, and why? Especially because this length of a skirt, front and back, you know, somewhere around the knee, with slits in the side so that you have better movement would be just as serviceable and look less odd. Returning to the leggings, I know that ripped jeans are apparently back in style now, but leggings with holes in them are not an adequate substitute for trousers. Especially if you're going to try and attempt to justify those high heels with but horse riding. If you're not going to attempt to justify those heels with but horse riding, good luck because you're going to be clip-clopping around like Dobbin the Pony anyway. Belly buttonhole, corset with boob window, arm and shoulder armor but with no shield to protect the midsection, just stab me now. The male version of the character is also inexplicably attired, but at least he gets clothes and a weird armored corset thing. With both versions of the character, the extremities are armored in a way that suggests that they should have a big shield to protect their vital organs, but they don't. Just stab me now for him too. Lots of extremities armor and basically nothing protecting the vital organs except for this weird corset thing, which if it's made of metal, is going to make it quite difficult for him to bend. If had shield would be better, does not. So not better. I mean, it's still better than whatever this is, but only because no high heels and clothes that mean that you're not exposed to the elements. If this is a one out of 10, then this maybe gets you a two. Time for another quote from Millennial Mage. But I don't have 40 ounces gold. I assume not, dear. You haven't any shoes. Where they're going, they don't need shoes. Time to sprinkle on some Mass Effect. I quite like both of these, albeit for different reasons. And I'm going to assume that they have helmets and it's just a case of, look, we worked really hard on these characters' faces. You are going to look at them, darn it. Lady on the left, I would say pretty good. Very serviceable, probably both wearable and protective, but I'm marking it down because I'm not a big fan of the color scheme and I also don't really know what's going on with that squishy stuff, like the stretchy thing at her midsection. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there but I don't like it. From what I can see of it, it's not the most aesthetic thing and I have some questions, but it probably wouldn't get you killed. Lady on the right, just 
a look. I would probably prefer slightly less separate cup embobining on that breastplate, especially as it's tight enough that I feel like you'd have to put your actual boobs in there. Though I am admittedly just less embobin than this lady apparently is, so whatever. But I have to tell you, it's the combination of these two pictures that I love, because the lady on the right looks like the smoking hot glamour shot that they use as the recruitment poster to get the lady on the left to sign up. But once she signs up, she finds out that her armour is not in fact shiny and purple, and she doesn't have time to blow dry her hair and apply a smoky eye and nude lipstick every day. Sad. I am a little concerned that the purple outfit is so tight that this lady couldn't breathe, but you know what? Still pretty good. To be fair, there are examples of I would wear it armor in the Mass Effect universe, and I think it is a quirk of the design that a lot of them look like they're suctioned on. If you're a video game character, you don't really need to breathe anyway, but you know. Still, at least there are a wide range of options. Time for another quote from Millennial Mage. The only universally healthful produce from an arcanist plant is the ending berry, though extreme caution is advised, as any damage to the pit will cause either nullification of the beneficial effects or death. Millennial Mage is a slice of life progression fantasy that follows Tala, a mage with a metric ton of student debt and a plan. It's also, even when she's in mortal peril, which is not infrequent, the kind of cozy adventure story that is best read with some hot chocolate or perhaps a cup of tea and a biscuit. A, a UK biscuit, not an American biscuit, though I assume that Tala only eats the American kind of biscuits. But she can't have everything. Onward. Casca from Berserk. Hmm. Now some of you might be thinking, she's got no leg armour on at all, that's gonna give her a lower rating. But here's the thing, I try to judge armour based on the efficiency and aesthetics and practicality of it, based on what it is. That was not very well explained, let me try again. If you have no kit and no armour and no nothing, the first piece of armour that you probably want is a helmet. Or maybe a shield, but if we're talking about things that go on your body, helmet. She's got a helmet. Okay, great. Next most important thing to protect is your torso, where your vital organs live. Ideally all of them, but particularly your heart and lungs. Now, how is she protecting her vital organs? Oh look, she has a cuirass. Nips in at the waist, flares out so she can bend, Marvellous. After that, the next piece of armour you might want just depends. Hands, arms, shoulders, maybe lower legs if most of your body is protected by a shield. There are lots of choices at this point is what I'm saying. Casca has gone for some extra protection for the shoulders and upper arms, not a bad plan, but she clearly started by protecting the most important things. Now is the fact that this is all of her armour a weight and endurance issue, or a heat issue, or a cost issue, or an efficiency issue? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. She doesn't have an entire suit of armour, but the stuff she does have prioritises protecting the most important bits. Also, assuming that they're not secretly stilettos out of frame, I really like her boots. I'd wear it. There was another Casca outfit sent to me by my patron, but unfortunately it was fan art so I can't use it. I don't know how well I succeed, but I try to avoid using fan art. But let me tell you some more about Millennial Mage. The world that JL Mullins has created is full of magic and everything in it wants to kill people. So it's a bit like magical Australia. Humans live in cities which are protected by their own magic, but even those wear out eventually, though it does take hundreds of years. Tala is a recently graduated student of the Magic Academy with crippling debt, no comment, and a plan to get that debt paid off quickly by skipping a few steps in her education, most notably the part where you're supposed to be apprenticed under a full mage before you become a full mage yourself. Is that a good plan? Well, you'll find out. The novel follows her as she drinks a lot of coffee and does a number of unorthodox things in pursuit of stable financial status, including getting her magical tattoos, you'll have to read it to find out why, from a real character. Is she always like this? Oh, yes, she's quite brilliant and so most of her conversations tend to be with herself. It was originally published on Royal Road, but now it's out as a book book and an audiobook narrated by Tess Irondale. So if you're into magic, dry humour, socially awkward 20-somethings making friends, or a combination of the above, you might like to give it a shot. Links in the pinned comment and description, and hopefully also at the end of the video, which we are now near. Last up we have Amiri from Pathfinder, because I think we should end on an amusing note. No? Because it's just amazing, right? She seems to have deliberately set out to make her outfit simultaneously as restrictive and encumbering and as unprotective as possible. I mean, celo has got so much going on that I'm concerned about her endurance, but at least she has her entire body covered. Whereas Amiri's thought process seems to be, my most vulnerable spots should be showcased with as little fabric as possible, while all the parts of me that others might choose to armour more lightly for better mobility and speed, I will cover with stuff. So much stuff. Also fear my giant sword. Girlie, I worry for your sanity, but perhaps that is the point. Just stab me now. If you'd like to read Millennial Mage, links are in the description and the pinned comment, and possibly also next to my face. The pinned comment may also contain something else you might enjoy too, but I could not possibly elaborate. See you next time.